Now, rule 13 is to calculate the target buyer sell point on the second leg. I, we've, we've gone over this in, in, a, in a lot of detail here. But this is to calculate where the second leg is fulfilled. You need to add or subtract the range of the first leg to or from the equilibrium point. So you take the range, you look for the equilibrium point, then you either add it to the equilibrium point or you, or you subtract it based on whether you think it's going to go up or down. And that's where the market needs to go to be fulfilled. If the trend is down, subtract the range from the equilibrium. If the trend is up, add the range to the equilibrium. This is the target buyer sell. When prices reach this point on the second leg, the trend is fulfilled and the move is over. You must exit at this point to avoid the counter trend. So, so once again, when the first leg is up, add the rally of the first leg to the equilibrium. When the first leg is down, subtract the decline of the first leg from the equilibrium. Look for the top or bottom to occur at the same time interval as well. So that's, that's putting them both together. Now, on page 80, we're going to talk a little bit about stop running, because you see this repeatedly uh, in the market. The floor traders pay a lot of attention to both interday and intraday uh, highs and lows. That means they know in their heads where it stopped on the last rally up, where it may have stopped on the life of contract rally up, where it stopped three days ago at the high, where yesterday's high was. They're aware of all these numbers. And the reason they're aware of these numbers is because brokers all over the country are telling their clients, uh, why not put a stop just above yesterday's high or today's high uh, or, or the high three days ago, just in case uh, you have the wrong side and then you'll be stopped out of the market. Well, what does this do? It's like waving a red flag to a bull. It makes, it makes the traders want to get it there because they know it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy once it trades into that area because all the brokers with uh, paper orders, the, the paper, your order namely, your stop, will start filling them there and the, and the market will have a little bit of boost anyway when it gets there. So how do I capitalize on this when I'm trading? When I see the market headed over an intraday high or any other recent high, I'm ready to sell it because that's where it should stop. And, and the same is true at the bottom. If you had an intraday low earlier in the day and the market's within shooting distance of that low, even if it's going higher, it'll get to that low and lower first, then turn around and go back up. And uh, by knowing this, you can avoid the frustration of being stopped out of the market only to learn that you really did have the right side, but, but your stop was hit and you were filled at a, a, a not a very good price. Uh, on 80, there's some days they do this all day long. Uh, and even on days of the trend, they do it in the non-trending hours of the day when it's going sideways. They gun for the stops. So you have a high, it goes a little bit higher for two minutes, three minutes, and then it runs the other way. Now there was a prior low, where, where is it going to stop on the downside once they get it under that low? And then there's yet a third low down. And again, they take it back up. And where does it go then? It goes back over the last high that was made. Uh, I haven't gotten to it yet, but we have a rule of three that comes into play here. And that is that on the third attempt, it will often run, or there will be at least three attempts at the, at the uh, stops on any given day. It's important to know. Now, on uh, page 79, I have uh, uh, an illustration of where will the market go. And you should look at that because it, it, what it does is it's showing you where, where part of the market, what, what the early portion of the trade looked like before it actually developed. And then you do the calculation and you see if it got there. On, eight, on 81, for instance, we have where should this market go? And we have a first leg of 420. We have the bounce off the first leg creating an equilibrium at 970.20. Well, we know the trend is down. Uh, we know the magnitude of the first leg. We know the equilibrium. So it's just a question of doing the math. 
the equilibrium at 970-20 minus 420 is the difference, and that is 966. And turn to the next page on 82, and where did the market go? Well, it went to 966. It went a little bit lower indeed. But it, you notice it bounced up from there before going lower again. So that's, that shows you uh, uh, the whole picture with both legs in there. And you'll notice that the, the market spends relatively little time trending and a lot of time waiting to trend. With this method of trading, you're trying to get in there right before the trends occur, capitalize on the trend, and get out. And again, the reason is, is it wears you down when it starts to go up and down and up and down, and you're, and you're making paper profits and losing them, and finally you often give up on a move that really isn't much of anything. Uh, it, but it's those breaks where the, 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 the real money is made, and it's made quickly. Now, in Rule 14, we have identified the time period of the first leg and project the time when the second leg will occur. Uh, we went over this. This is how much time does it take for this trend to develop. And the, the trend consists of two legs. If you have a seven-minute uh, first leg, you'll probably get a seven-minute second leg. Uh, and I mentioned this before as well, but every day is time specific. By that I mean you'll find by observing the market that there are certain days when the same numbers come up over and over and over again. For instance, uh, a nine-minute rally, uh, another nine-minute leg. Then in the afternoon, you'll have nine-minute breaks and nine-minute breaks. The day after, there will be no nine-minute breaks. There will be 12-minute rallies or 12-minute breaks. So you've got to pay attention to what's the predominant number in terms of the minutes on any given day. And this is relatively straightforward here on 80. Uh, 3 and 84, so we'll move over to the example on 85. 85, it's late in the morning uh, after 11 o'clock, and, re and remember I said that you tend to get highs and lows right near the noon hour. So what we get here is a, a leg of 13 minutes, 250 points. We get the inevitable bounce. And I think you can see from looking at these examples that like night falls day, there's a bounce when you get a, a break or a reaction when you get a, a, a rally initially. So you get, the, you get the break, you get the bounce, and then you get the uh, second break down. Here the second leg was 13 minutes, exactly. Uh, and then the question comes up, well, where do you measure from? You measure from an extreme high to an extreme low. So here we have the high up above 980, and it breaks to the, it looks like, 77 area. Then you get uh, the consolidation, uh, sideways, choppiness, and then you get one more spike up, and that's the high, and you measure down, and that should give you, going forward in time, the very bottom uh, 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 one-minute bar, which is 13 minutes later. Um, why these things occur, I don't know, nor really do I, I, I care. The point is that if you observe the market, you'll see the symmetry over and over again. And it's important, I think, to, to, to see how well they, they, uh, they behave and act. Now, on 86, we have, an, we have a 25-minute break and rally. And here is a pattern where it tends to fall. First it goes up for 25 minutes, and then it comes down for 25. But remember, the, the symmetry is still there. Uh, up for 25, down for 25, or down for 25, up for 25. If it can't do, if the second leg isn't in the same direction, it will be in the opposite direction. Moreover, it will be of comparable length and often a little bit more because they're running stops on the other, other side. Rule 15, project both time and price where the second leg should be fulfilled. With this calculation, you know both where the market should go and when it should get there. And I go into the general entry rules. You buy or sell between the equilibrium and the 618 retracement. Since time is critical in placing the trades, you generally want to sell at the equilibrium price or higher. 
buy at the equilibrium price or lower. You can then add to the position as it approaches the 618 with a close stop if the 618 is violated. Now, this is the theory, but what happens in actual trading? What happens is you'll get a leg down, you'll get, you'll get a bounce up, you'll get an equilibrium, you won't take the trade, you'll get a 618, it, it may approach it but not reach it, and still you're not in, in the trade. But you still know where it, should, where it should go because you've done the calculations. You've taken the, the, the magnitude of the first leg, you subtracted it from the equilibrium, and what happens, it starts to slip down, it starts to break out to the downside. What I find happens sometimes is you have to chase it because if it's any good, it won't come back. So at that point, you have to sell new lows as it starts to go down. But again, it's more risky to do that, and uh, once it fulfills itself by going to the target price, you have to get out.